SpreadGreatIdeas.com says the measure of a man is what he does with power. Rankings. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome into Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from ESPN Central Texas. Thank you for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. Today, let's do power rankings. Let's do title game scenarios, all of them, because now the Big 12 has released a statement that it helps unpack it for everybody. And then finally, the Big 12 has entered a new era of expansion. A lot of big news there, but let's go power rankings first. Number one, sadly, they're still there. The University of Texas Longhorns, they won 10 games despite all the odds. They haven't done that in forever, and here they are, and Quinn Ewers is good, and this team thinks it can win a Big 12 championship and go to the college football playoff. I Am I bitter? Absolutely. freaking lutely Texas is at one. They're the best team in the Big 12 right now. They deserve to win a Big 12 championship. We're going to have to come face-to-face with that pretty soon. Number two, Kansas State. If there is one team that I think can beat Texas in the Big 12 title game, it is not Oklahoma, it is not Oklahoma State, it's not Iowa State, it's not Texas Tech, it's not West Virginia, it's not it's not Kansas, it's not Baylor. I think Kansas State right now has the best shot to go toe-to-toe and beat Texas at a neutral site. You saw them almost beat Texas a couple of weeks ago, and then Colin Klein pissed down his pant leg. Number three, Oklahoma. OU is a, this is one that I'm going to study for a while. Two losses in the middle of the season where you're going, you lost to Kansas? And then Oklahoma State, you, you lost the game before that to Oklahoma. Or the, the game was the game out of Oklahoma State? What are you? Wh- why? And you blew out West Virginia and you barely beat a BYU team that's getting smacked by everybody. Oklahoma's the third best team in this league. They have the second best roster in the league, but I still can't figure out the coaching staff. I still think Jeff Levy is not the right fit at the offensive coordinator. Your, your offensive coordinator has to be a compliment to the head coach, and I don't think that's what Jeff Levy is right now. Oklahoma at three, but they have enough holes that if they get to a Big 12 championship, I don't know if they can beat Texas at four Oklahoma State. Another team that not playing its best football. The reason I think Kansas State can win a Big 12 championship is it feels like they are playing their best football right now, winning gritty games or blowing teams out. Oklahoma State struggled with Houston, just had that loss to UCF that I can't get out of. It's burned in my brain. I finally forgave you for the South Alabama loss, and then that UCF game was abhorrent. Oklahoma State's good. If they play at the level they played against Oklahoma, they could beat Texas, but they're at four right now in my power rankings. Being top five still a great surprise. Speaking of great surprises, Iowa State at five is shocking. Had you told me that preseason, and we can make the case that West Virginia is the biggest surprise this year, but I think the the true shocker might be might be Iowa State. It's tough to play the comparison game of who had the more successful season for teams that have very low expectations, but Iowa State losing a starting quarterback, starting running back a couple of weeks before the season, being a top five team in the Big 12, being at least their, their name thrown out there in the conversation for a Big 12 championship, and it would take a monumental tie and a bunch of jazz would have to go right. And there's a ton, there's this algorithm and that algorithm and everybody, this upset has to happen. And that upset has to happen. And I, it, they're not going to go play in Arlington, but the fact that there is some weird mathematical way that they kind of could on the last week is shocking for a team that I thought would go three and nine. Iowa state at five, number six, Texas tech. Did you hey, whoa, whoa, pause, pause, pause. Did you, did you see that Texas tech just snuck its way back in here. Kind of without, uh, Without any of us realizing it, Texas Tech got good again or good enough to win games? Texas Tech got got good enough to say, hey, don't forget about us. We still exist here. The same team that a couple of weeks ago might not have gone to a a bowl game has now barely just inched its way past a beat-up Kansas team and, and won by one against UCF at home. Texas Tech is back up there near the top of the power rankings, then the top half at number six. Number seven, West Virginia. I I war with this one because West Virginia on its best day. I I'm going to say this. I'm going to I'm going to. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll look you in the eyes. West Virginia, at its peak football, can compete with anybody in the Big Twelve, and I think beat anybody in the Big Twelve. West Virginia is so inconsistent that them being at seven is still a gift, still a gift. But at their best football, I like where they are. At eight, I have Kansas. And it might feel weird keeping Kansas out of the top half of the Big 12 with their resume this season. They have beaten Oklahoma. They have been such a good football team when healthy. But their problem right now is they're they're not. 
Ballard's a good quarterback. He's a good option, but he hasn't been able to win games. And until he can win games, Kansas sits outside of the top seven for me. They're at number eight in this week's power rankings. Number nine, TCU. You finally got your coveted win. You beat Baylor. You get the stupid ass trophy. You get the thing that you, the the shield you got to take through. I don't break it, please. TCU was bad at football this year. You're going to want to wash this one from the record. And it makes me wonder, really makes me wonder, how many games would Gary Patterson have won last year? It wasn't like, it wasn't like Sonny Dykes came in year one and was like, you know what? I need a billion new transfers. He didn't pull a Dion or GJ Kenny at Texas State. And he went out and won with mostly Sonny Dykes players. Mostly Gary Patterson's players. Oops. How many, how many games would Gary Patterson have won if he was still at TCU? Hmm. We'll see the trajectory of old Sonny Dykes, but it's a very interesting question to mull over. At number 10, UCF. The Knights have been the story of, this is going to be a great offseason just storyline. They've been the story of the conference in teams that just can't get out of their own way. When the game gets tough, when it's tight at the end and they've got an opportunity to go win it, they could be bowl eligible, they could be a seven and eight win team, they're right there on the cusp. They don't. They don't get it done. They just they, they can't close. They, now, they blew out Oklahoma State. You've seen what they can do at their peak. You've seen what they can do healthy. But for them to be at, at, at this point at number 10, it shouldn't be this way. They are three plays away, three plays away from being a top-tier team in the Big 12, being a top-five team maybe in the Big 12, uh, or at least in that top-half conversation instead of number 10 right now because they just can't finish. Number 11, Another team that can't finish until they're married, BYU. I don't know, man. You know, how much do you get for going for getting close this week? How many moral victories can you take in week 12? BYU, I can't call you a disappointment. Welcome, welcome to the Big 12. Welcome to playing. You, you don't get to just play half a conference schedule. You don't get to just play, good get to just play half a regular season. Number 12, Cincinnati. Uh-huh. You exist. Scott Satterfield, you're not last. You beat Houston, which was the saving grace of your season. Number 13, Houston. I guess, I guess, hold on to Dana Holgerson for another year. Um, I, I, mm, it's tough, right? You're going to have those conversations with some of these teams at the bottom. What coordinators get fired? What head coaches might get fired? Baylor sits at 14 right now in my power rankings as well. That's unacceptable for a team that has been in the Big 12 and has struggled so much in the first year of the expansion league. They are the worst team in the conference as it sits right now, getting blown out by everybody. It's a lack of competitive. A lack of competitiveness. They lost to Houston at home. Baylor is the worst team in the Big 12. But at number 15, I've added another little wrinkle in my power rankings. There's a number 15 this week. That's the Big 12's rule changes. That is Brett Yormark is number 15 in my Big 12 power rankings for saying, hey, look, by my rule, by my notes right here, this email that I sent you months ago, months ago, he told me, he sent it to me in an email and everybody else said that Kansas State will be the Big 12 championship alongside Texas with these certain rules. Then told me he was going to clarify those rules, not change, clarify. And that clarification meant that Kansas State was no longer in the Big 12 championship. Now Oklahoma State is. Now, is that the right thing? Sure. But was that a change or a clarification? It was a change. The, a whole team was moved out of position. But it's just a clarification. It's not a change, right? It's not what didn't change anything. That's number 15 this week. is stupid rule change and trying to gaslight me. Number one, Texas. Number two, Kansas State. Number three, Oklahoma. Those are the three best teams in the league. Then I think there's a gap. The three most consistent teams in the league right now, even you could argue Oklahoma a bit behind Kansas State uh, in terms of consistency. Four Oklahoma State, five Iowa State, six Texas Tech, seven West Virginia, eight Kansas, nine TCU. UCF at number 10. BYU at 11, 12 Cincinnati, 13 Houston, 14 the Baylor Bears, and number 15 Brett Yormark and his new rules. Those are your power rankings this week. When we come back, what's the what, what are all these... Uh, title game scenarios this locked on big 12 part of the locked on podcast network your team every day today's show friend is brought to you by listening.com listening.com is where i go for papers textbooks pdfs websites and emails to listen to them i don't like reading I know. I'm a simple man. I'm a simple man. Grew up in Valonia, Arkansas. Couldn't learn. I didn't learn to read until I was about 15 or 16. And you know what? I'm still not all that good at it. So I just plug and play, baby. I go PDF, textbook. I put it into listening.com and it, it, it reads it to me. One note click, by the way. So I just click the little plus note button and it just puts the notes in there. So it's like, oh, I heard something that I, that I liked. I'm going to put that, that part of the article. I'm listening to an expansion article. Put, put that part of the article in my notes. 
automatic chapter detection, data tables are all compiled for you as well. Users are 50% PhDs, 30% college students, 20% working professionals. So right now at listening.com, I'm going to give you, right? You don't, you don't know. Am I going to like it? Am I not going to like it? Try it out. Normally, users get two weeks free. With me, you get three weeks free. I'm going to give you an extra week. I'm going to give you an extra week. Listening.com slash locked on. Listening.com slash locked on gets you three weeks free. So go ahead. Give it a try. Usually two weeks, three weeks for me. Listening.com forward slash locked on. Let's go through every Big 12 championship conference game, conference championship title game scenario. These are so stupid complex. So the Big 12, right, has been on its heels. Let's preface this. The Big 12 has been on its heels because there was a rule clarification where Barry Trammell said, hey, based on your rules, Kansas State gets to go to the Big 12 championship, but they lost to Oklahoma State. And the Big 12 said, yeah, you know what? Barry's right. Let's have a conversation about this. And that conversation is going to go that we're going to clarify. And by clarify, we mean change. Now, Oklahoma State's going to go. Well, here's a release that they sent me and everybody else in the media that says if Texas wins and they, they clinch a berth on Friday, if Texas wins and clinches a berth on Friday, the following scenarios apply on Saturday. So the very likely thing is that Texas will beat Texas Tech in Austin. That's the very likely thing. The most likely thing here, the most likely thing, period, is that Texas wins on Friday. Boom, ticket, punched. Then Oklahoma State beats BYU. Boom, ticket, punched. Nothing else. Has to happen. If Oklahoma State defeats BYU and Texas beats Texas Tech, those two teams are playing in Arlington. We get to see their matchup for the first time this season. Well, if Oklahoma defeats TCU on Friday, on Friday, and that win is followed by a Texas win and an Oklahoma State loss. So OU has to win. Texas wins. Oklahoma State loses to BYU. It's a Red River rematch in Arlington. So we need Oklahoma to beat TCU. Texas to beat Texas Tech. Those two teams are a good spot. If Oklahoma State loses to BYU, those two teams play in the Big 12 championship. If can't listen to this one, this is well, we get crazy. If Kansas State defeats Iowa State on Saturday and Texas wins on Friday, so Texas has won on Friday, we get to Saturday and Kansas State beats Iowa State. Oh, and by the way, Oklahoma lost to TCU on Friday and Oklahoma State loses to BYU, then Kansas State can get in. Listen again. Listen again. This is tough. If Kansas State wins against Iowa State, that's the first thing that might not, it might not happen. But if they beat Iowa State and Texas is already taking care of business against Texas Tech, Oklahoma gets upset by TCU and Oklahoma State gets upset by BYU, which both of those things are very unlikely. In that wild scenario, we get, in my opinion, the best Big 12 championship, Texas versus Kansas State. The two teams that are playing the best football this time of year, Texas and Kansas State. Will that happen? A lot has to go right. Speaking of a lot having to go right, if you're in Iowa State and you sit there and you think, wait, wait a second, we have three losses in Big 12 play. If this happened, if that, oh, wait a second. Hey, there could be a lot of teams with three losses in Big 12 play. This could be actually like a real thing. Yeah. I, I can't I can't unpack for you an exact scenario in which Iowa State goes to the Big 12 championship. I can't say, hey, it, it needs this, this, and this to happen because listen, hear me out for just one second. Just one, just try to work with me here. If TCU beats Oklahoma, if TCU goes in and beats Oklahoma, which is not likely, but TCU goes in, they take care of business somehow. Then Oklahoma six and three. Texas Tech beats Texas. They are six and three. Texas Tech, that is. And then Oklahoma State loses to BYU. That's another six and three team. And the West Virginia beats Baylor. That's a six and three team. And Iowa State beats Kansas State. Those are both six and three teams. And Iowa State has a tiebreaker above Kansas State. At that point, at that point, my brothers and sisters in Christ, things get real complex. I can't begin to unpack for you how the Big 12 would divvy that. They don't include that in the email. They were like, you know what? We want to, we just don't even want to bring up the doomsday, the ultimate doomsday scenario. Instead, they give us this. The Big 12 says this. If Texas Tech wins on Friday, if they upset Texas, no team can clinch a bid to the championship until Saturday. So the result of the TCU and Oklahoma game will not tell us who goes to Arlington yet. Texas can still go to the championship if two of these three two loss teams lose. If Kansas State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, two of those three lose on Friday or Saturday, Texas still gets to go to the Big 12 championship. Now listen to this. If Texas loses on Friday and Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State all get wins, we get real complex. 
at that point, we can still keep Texas out of the Big 12 title. If you're if you're listening at home and there's one thing you take away from this segment that you can bring the water cooler, we need Texas to lose because at that point, three teams that are favored, if those three teams take care of business, we can keep Texas out of the Big 12 championship. If Texas, here's a crazy one, loses on Friday and two or three, two lost teams win, that being Kansas State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, there will be three or four teams tied for both championship berths. And here's what the Big 12 says before they change the rules verbatim. Multiple scenarios exist in this circumstance contingent on which teams remain in a tiebreaker pool. That's that's the verbiage the Big 12 is going to use here is that in these scenarios, if we get to the finish line and three or four teams are tied up or six teams are tied up, there are multiple things that could happen. That's that's how vague they're going to lay it out there and just say, bear with us. We don't want to do the math yet. Let's see what happens on Friday and go from there. So if you are a fan, a God loving Big 12 fan, we are just rooting for Texas Tech this week. Everybody combined together, all of our forces in one, rooting for Texas Tech to beat Texas. And you know, you're a UT fan. You're like, oh, that's so mean. He's rooting against Longhorns and he's discriminatory against Longhorns. Buddy, you nailed it. You nailed it. Those are the scenarios that we know as of right now per the Big 12. Coming up, Big 12 expansion looks to be in a new era. There's a new uh, Help me. You're going to have to help me in this next one. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by the place that I go to make money. That's FanDuel.com. People talk about passive income. I talk about FanDuel. What's the difference? FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. Yesterday, I'm sitting around watching the old NFL, tossing the pigskin around. It's like, you know what? I think the Detroit Lions, the Dallas Cowboys, and the Houston Texans are all going to win. If I, I, I parlayed it together, built a little parlay, those three teams, plus 100. So if I put $100 in, I win $100 back. And guess what? It wasn't pretty. They were close games. I was sweating it, but I had a blast watching those three teams win and money from FanDuel be put in my bank account. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bets. If you just put $5 in the Cowboys to beat the Panthers yesterday, you get 150 bucks in bonus bets. Any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, more. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. Kick off the NFL season. It's FanDuel.com Forward slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel is the force. <clears throat> wow. FanDuel official partner of the NFL. We have entered a new era of Big 12 expansion. We're going to talk Washington State, Oregon State. We're going to talk Gonzaga here. Let's start the Washington State, Oregon State side. I want to, I want to make this one brief, try to give you the, the update that I've that we've all been given. Those two teams are looking at the now. They are they are currently in a, hey, how do we build a schedule for next year's football season? And one thing that I mentioned is the first show I ever did about this topic was the Big 12 is, is a conference, not a lifeboat. The Big 12 is a conference, not a charity, not an orphanage. Now, if those, orphan, if those orphans are stinking rich, Washington State and Oregon State, we do know they control the assets in the Pac-12. That could behoove you, could work well in your favor. But right now, And the way the college football playoff committee has moved, they effectively superseded Kirk Schultz, the president of Washington State, and said, hey, it doesn't matter really what we vote or who does what. We're going to go with what makes sense. We're going to go with common sense here and effectively supersede some of these these supposed rules and bylaws and try to keep teams with less than eight, keep teams that are in a conference with less than eight teams out of the college football playoff. Is that the the right thing to do? 100%. There there should never be a, hey, we have two teams, we're a conference because of a grace period. Let one of us in. By rule, you have to. That wouldn't, like, yes, legally, as I keep telling you, legally, that's how it's written. That's how the rule is written. I can't get around it. I guess some people are are overruling those rules to try to get around it, but that, that isn't practical in college football. Now, from the beginning, the one ask that I've had with the Big 12 and folks that cover the Big 12 is to at least humor this idea, to understand 
why it could make sense for Washington State and Oregon State to come to the Big 12. And I still don't think you're out of the woods on that yet. I, I don't think that those expansion talks are over forever because those two teams are big enough. They bring in revenue enough in in TV, especially for Washington State, that they will make a case to be Power 5 again. The one that I want to circle here for a second is Gonzaga. The Big 12, hear me out, is not going to add Gonzaga in basketball. Every, and I I want you to, when you go to your water cooler and have a conversation with your coworker who grew up in Spokane, and he says, I cannot wait for Texas Tech and Gonzaga to be conference foes. You figuratively slap them. Don't, don't, not physically. Figuratively. Because how, I'm done. I am done with the, oh, Gonzaga's going to the Big 12. Six months ago, that was the thing. It's like, oh, you know, the, the Big 12 is going to add Gonzaga as a basketball school. And guess who jumps on it? Brett McMurphy, who's a big name. And then, uh, oh, uh, well, now Ross Dellinger is talking about it. Oh, that's a big name. Well, it must be happening. You know, let's all kind of, let's go two or three days, big stink, Gonzaga, Big 12, basketball. Nothing happens. Then a couple months later, Ross Dellinger sitting around board and goes, you know what? F it. Gonzaga to Big 12. Gonzaga to the Big 12. Tweets it. Whole world burns. At what point does the boy cry wolf enough? At what point do we all sit back and go, huh, there really hasn't been any merit to this? Now, has Brett Yormark had open conversations with officials at Gonzaga before? Yeah. It's been reported by those that are in the know that Brett Yormark has visited Gonzaga or visited with their officials, and they've gone back and forth about them joining the conference. But I'm tired of every three weeks, every four weeks, Hey, this is the week. Oh, they pick back up conversation. Oh, they're talking about it again. The Big 12 and Gonzaga are deep in the heat of conversation about them joining as a basketball school. Because every time, I mean, the smoke and the mirrors are there. I'm, I'm sure that they're talking about this, and I'm sure they have talked about this. I, I'm sure that if they could work it out, they would find a way to work it out. But they haven't yet. We can speculate. I'm sure I will still speculate. But I'm just done seeing these tweets from the talking heads, seeing these tweets from the journalists that say talks have heated up again about Gonzaga to the Big 12. I don't talks have heated up about me eating breakfast tomorrow. Great. I don't eat breakfast. You can talk about it all you want. I just I, I don't eat breakfast. There's nothing we can do here. We can talk about it. And in a couple of weeks from now, it's like, oh, but he's going to eat breakfast tomorrow. No, I'm not. And then maybe I told maybe. I told my buddy, hey, I think I'm going to eat breakfast tomorrow. But then if I keep not eating breakfast, I'm not a breakfast eater. You keep tweeting it out. But I don't think we need to put so much merit to this idea that Gonzaga is going to the Big 12 in basketball. And the more it happens this way, the more we get the, oh, yeah, they're really talking. They're actually talking about it. Or, oh, the, the conversations are heavy. Or, oh, they're in the thick of possibly signing something. The more that keeps being brought up, with no follow-up, zero follow-up, the less I believe any of it, right? Like, oh, look how close they are to making this happen. Mm, no, they haven't really been. Why should I think they are now? I don't. There's your update. <laughs> is, that, so is that pessimistic? How aggressive? Did I yell at you a little bit, man? Sorry. So I'm trying to create like a friend, friendly friendship bond thing, not really come down on you. I'll be better tomorrow. This has been It Always Will Be. Thank you for making it your first listen every single day. Come back tomorrow and I will tell you all that I know about the Big 12. I'll tell you everything I know. Locked on. Thanks again for making it your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.